Hi, welcome to Vet Squared Innovate podcast, the second in a series. We hope you enjoyed the first one about creating a mentally healthy, safe workplace with Dr. Leanne Wall. Today, as we promised, we will focus on three areas, self and business leadership, on basic business skill, and on emotional fitness for veterinarians to eliminate non-clinical anxiety and depression within the profession and help support veterinary professionals and teams and business leaders be the best they can be. So today is all about business and I'd like to welcome today Joanne Scott. She'll be on soon. Joanne Scott is a commercial property specialist. Hi Jo. <laughs> I've just introduced you as a, prefer, a um, commercial property specialist and with your key field of interest being tenant um, representation. So thank you so much for joining us today. Um, veterinary costs, the highest costs are salaries. The second one is supplies and your rent is really important. And what fascinated me about you was when you mentioned the word hooks and sometimes we swallow hooks in contracts that we sign and um, so without further ado I'd, I'd love you just to briefly explain how you got involved in this field and how you can help veterinary business owners um, with this serious contractual obligation they have. Thank you Larry, hi everyone. Yes I am um... I've been in the commercial property industry for about 20 odd years and um, a large portion of that was being in a, in a landlord representation role, um, looking after landlords, uh, putting leases together and property management around that. Also looking at um, new sites, developing new sites um, and really maximizing land and uh, site returns. Um, over the past five odd years, I've switched my focus into tenant representation and it's really, really struck me how important it is for anyone in business who has a lease to have a property professional on their team. Um, there are many, many hooks that can be inadvertently swallowed and um, having legal representation when looking at leases firstly is crucial, but the second thing that is often overlooked is having a property professional on your side to manage and negotiate um, the commercial aspects of the lease and to help you to be aware of all the hooks that are hidden in there and to make sure that the lease aligns with your business goals. Um, when are you wanting to sell your business? If so, when? And so that you structure the, the, the agreement um, in such a way that it looks after you in both the short and the long term. So you, you mentioned um, hooks. Can you give us um, an idea of, of um, a simple hook that you can get out of or hooks that you may have swallowed or more complex hooks that you should perhaps be aware of yeah, you I may think, already have swallowed, but how do we prevent that from happening? I think the biggest hook um, that people swallow um, after your commercial negotiation is how the rent reviews are structured and how that looks over the term of the lease and future terms. Um, also, the fine print around notice periods and time of the essence clauses often catch people unawares because a lease is signed, packed in a drawer and not looked at until you either have a rude shock or um, it's time to exit. So, and by then it's often too late because you haven't complied with your notice periods that, that are written in the lease. Um, obviously, if you're planning on selling the business, the assignment clauses are always pretty important. And then what does it look like when you're getting out of the lease? What are your obligations in terms of make good and have you planned for that? And have you saved enough money for that? Because it can be a hefty, hefty cost. Mm -hmm. So those are just some of the things that, that spring to mind. Um, I think, in, especially in the veterinary industry, um, 
repairs and maintenance is something that a vet presumes that they are responsible for everything for. But often there are fair wear and tear clauses in the lease that, that protect the tenant from having to pay for old worn out things that need to be replaced. For instance, tenant has to look after the, the, the air conditioner and the servicing of the air conditioner, but does your lease allow for when it wears out due to our age that the landlord should be responsible for that as a capital replacement. Um, things like gate motors, um, you know, the, those kind of things that do wear out due, due to age and, and who's responsible for replacement because it can be expensive. And if you don't own the property as a tenant, it's certainly a, an unpleasant cost to have to bear to upgrade somebody else's asset really. Comment um, a little bit about what your rent should be as a percentage of your turnover. And I, I, I would imagine it's very different. Uh, sometimes veterinary uh, business owners own the building, so they're the landlord and the tenant. And some go through this transition period where you now have to charge yourself a rent. So you've got you know, the landlord cap on, or you've got the tenant cap on, and you've got the employee cap on as well. So it can be quite confusing. Um, yeah. And that's aside from when you move into a commercial space, which probably has a higher percentage of rent cost. Yeah, it's it's quite a difficult one to just broad, broadly answer that question. But one would look at the veterinary industry and say that staff costs in a veterinary business are higher than staff costs would be if you was, had a coffee shop. Um, and therefore your rent has to come within certain parameters to make to make the business profitable and to make sure that your that your ratios are right. Uh, generally, I would have said in a veterinary world, you want to keep your lease costs under nine percent of the turnover. Um, if you were in a retail shop and you weren't you weren't employing vets, but you were just employing admin staff or, sh or shop assistance it can go up as high as 14 percent. so it does depend on your business model and the position of the business and where your business is coming from are you reliant on foot traffic and what percentage of your turnover is being covered on staff costs and rent because those are the generally in most businesses those are the two biggest um, pain points. So you, you, um, what I'm hearing is that um, it's probably better to be aware of these hooks you may swallow up front, but once you've swallowed them, they're kind of there. Um, an awareness of of what you've already swallowed, and then also um, it's a bit like a dog swallowing a fish hook. Some things are really cheap to remove, and some things are really expensive. Um, would it be possible almost to have a a checklist of what might you swallow, what have you swallowed, and how do you prepare for extracting them should um, a situation develop, I want to move my premises, or we're having a partnership dissolution, those documents really kick into place. Yes, I, I think that's actually quite a good idea to have the checklist. Um, and to be, a, you know, if, if you swallowed it, you've swallowed it, it's but just the awareness. So what is coming up when? When is the lease coming up for renewal? What, um, what are your rent review clauses? Are there any clauses protecting you from it going up too high or too low? Um, I know that the, the CPI rates over the last two years in New Zealand have really been astronomically high. And, and if your business is not, your business income is not, increasing as, as high or higher than CPI, you're gonna go backwards. So how does that look? A lot of landlords will say your rent is CPI plus a certain percentage. So it's knowing how to forecast what those costs look like, what your repair and maintenance costs look like. And also, um, you know, is, is the building starting to look shabby? Who's responsible for redecoration costs and how does that, how does that affect both current lease and future periods? So it's managing those 
those scenarios and um, being aware of, of what it looks like when if you decided that the premises that you're in is old shabby, it hasn't been cared for, you want to relocate, what do you need to put in your budget for the make good and for the exit of the current lease? It's, it's a big piece of work and I generally advise that plans are, you start planning a year in advance, a, a year before your, um, before your lease is up for renewal, that's the time to start saying what does this look like and, and to have a proper strategic conversation and a proper forward planning conversation and understanding the market because if you have market rent reviews without I always like to put a cap on my market reviews or on my on my CPI reviews so that I know that the rent can't run away. But I've been in situations uh, in recent times where the market is almost double what the current the rent the tenants are paying in rent and and so how does that impact you? Because in in markets where there's very low vacancy factors, not a lot of lot of space around. Um, veterinary hospitals are pretty bespoke and so how does that look in the market and what's how's it going to affect a market rent review and and that is something that really needs a good amount of planning long 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 in advance i would imagine um you've really exposed um a lot of the hooks which i certainly was unaware of um i wonder if other veterinary business owners are if you if you were going to open up a new veterinary hospital um I would imagine that it would be useful having someone like you on the team. Um, I know cost is very, very difficult to be specific about cost, but we mentioned cost up front, salaries, supplies, rent are biggies. Um, is there any, um, any indication if one of the veterinary business owners or one of the groups wanted you on their team, how would you, um, how would you be billed out? Um. It does depend on the extent of the work and the, the number of properties um, I'm working on. But I generally like to work on a monthly retainer and um, that takes care of anything property related. Um, if it's a straight new, new product, new site um, acquisition or a new site development or opening up new sites, closing sites, those are different conversations because it's it's one sort of business, it's not ongoing business. So it is very dependent on um, on the on the amount of work that is really needing to be put in and on the length of time and the software that I, behind what I'm doing that I need to that I need to take mm. into consideration. But it's a damn sight cheaper than the mistakes that you make. Mm. Um, and it's a damn sight cheaper than having a senior property manager on your on your uh, payroll. So if I if I can just summarize briefly, it's always good to check before you <laughs> swallow the hooks. It's um, there's a few things you can check while you're in the lease, and then in that process, prepare yourself for possible exits from this legal agreement. Because I mean, they are pretty hefty, and um, I guess your um, a good lease agreement is a great asset if it's got all the right things in place, but it can also become a um, an asset with a lot of hidden liability in it. Yes, definitely an asset and a liability, but also it's all also I always say it's a little bit like a moving bowl of jello. Um, it it is cast in stone in terms of a legal agreement, but um, it's not uncommon to create variation documents at the time of lease renewal and to renegotiate certain points within the lease at the time of renewal, depending on how your business is going and what the pain points are mm. and, and what the demand in the market is for that type of space. So depending you mentioned on the word, um, your PowerPoint. Cap and your, your business is called Collar and Cap. Could you just explain that a bit? Yes, um, I always say if you don't know what a collar is and a cap is, then you need my services. Um, <laughs> really, what what you're doing is at rent review or at least renewal time. Um, I like to always put a cap where I can 
to limit how high your rent can go. Um, a landlord will often come back and say, if there's a cap, I want to call it so it can't drop below a, a certain rate. But it okay. does really help you to mitigate runaway costs. It helps you with your forward projection and your costs. Um, and it also helps you to mitigate massive inflationary spikes if, if you have CPI um, associated with your, um, with your rent reviews as well. Um, as I mentioned before, the market in some instances can easily double in a very short space of time if there's, if there's pressure on property and not enough space for people. And that would have a, a massive impact on market reviews and a, a cap certainly helps to alleviate the pain. Well, wow. so um, how would someone contact you? What areas do you work in? Um, and uh, there's obviously care still in you, having been a vet nurse in your past. So thanks for your, your care <laughs> of, the, of the business. Yes. It was a very distant past, but yes. Um, you can contact me by dropping me an email to joanne.scott at collar in the letter in cap.com. And I certainly do work across um, most Commonwealth countries. It's most leases are under Commonwealth law. Um, so definitely uh, South Africa, Australia and New Zealand, those are the countries where I've had the most experience, but certainly can look further abroad if need be. Thank you so much. And um, I'm sure we'll be chatting again. And if anyone wants to contact Joe or me through uh, Vet Squared, please do so. I hope you've enjoyed this episode. Thanks, Joe.